Hey guys, welcome back to Cruise Blog. It's Allie and I just returned from a very busy month sailing on board two of the newest cruise ships in the cruising industry. So I tried Norwegians and Celebrities' newest cruise ships to see how they compared and I'm going to be sharing everything that I learned and experienced in this video. All right, let's get started. There's nothing quite like sailing on a brand new cruise ship as you're able to experience the latest and greatest of what a cruise ship has to offer. Similar to driving a brand new car, everything on a new cruise ship is both fresh and modern. 2023 was a very busy year for brand new cruise ships from some of the biggest names in the cruising world, and I was lucky enough to set sail on two of the most exciting new cruise ships at sea. Last month, I was invited to sail on a two-night media cruise on board Celebrity Ascent. This stunning cruise ship is the newest in Celebrity Cruises' fleet and the fourth in the Edge Class series. The day after I disembarked Celebrity Ascent, I boarded the brand new Norwegian Viva, which is the snazzy new cruise ship from Norwegian Cruise Line. Norwegian Viva is the second ship to debut in the new Prima class for the cruise line. Sailing back to back on the newest cruise ships from Celebrity Cruises and Norwegian Cruise Line provided a unique perspective to see how these two ships stack up against one another. I only had a short time on board each of these brand new cruise ships, but I already want to plan more cruises on board. So here's how the newest ships from Norwegian and Celebrity Cruises compared. First, let's look at an overview of these ships. To start, I first sailed on Celebrity Ascent for a quick two-night itinerary that was hosted by the cruise line. During this media event, I was able to experience the very best of the new Celebrity Ascent, and she stole my heart. It was a whirlwind cruise with little time to relax, as Celebrity Ascent is packed with amenities, dining options, and entertainment. Celebrity Ascent debuted for Celebrity Cruises in November 2023. She is the latest ship in the award-winning and trailblazing Edge class. Holding 3,260 passengers at capacity, Celebrity Ascent clock in at 140,000 gross tons. Immediately following my jam-packed cruise on Celebrity Ascent, I hit the seas again on board the newest ship from Norwegian Cruise Line on Norwegian Viva. The elegant ship is the second in Norwegian's Prima class and follows the success of Norwegian Prima, which debuted in 2022. Norwegian Viva is similarly sized to Celebrity Ascent, measuring almost identical at 143,000 gross tons. Compared to Celebrity Ascent, Norwegian Viva holds fewer passengers at 3,999 guests at capacity. Although Norwegian Viva is bigger and holds fewer passengers, I did find Norwegian Viva to feel more crowded. This is also a common complaint with Norwegian's Prima class, which actually prompted the cruise line to design the upcoming Prima class ships to be 10% bigger. Of course, a smaller sized vessel allows for more diverse ports of call since mega ships can run into problems with size restrictions, so it's a a little bit of a give and take there. Next, let's compare the ship design. Norwegian Viva and Celebrity Ascent are both beautifully designed ships that feel very fresh, elegant, and elevated. Both ships have a welcome, warm ambiance on board, especially compared to mega cruise ships that are double in size. Moreover, Celebrity Ascent and Norwegian Viva were designed with outdoor spaces in mind to allow guests more opportunities than ever to connect with the sea. On both of these new cruise ships, you can find ample space outdoors to lounge, have a drink, relax, or dine. Comparing the two ships, it is tough to beat Celebrity Ascent in terms of design. The ship is stunning from bow to stern with immense attention to detail. The entire ship feels like a work of art with its impressive design. From the European-inspired sunset bar on the ship's aft to the Grand Plaza's brilliant chandelier illuminating the atrium, Celebrity Ascent is more like a floating boutique hotel than a cruise ship. Celebrity Ascent's design facilitated better passenger flow with enough spaces on board for everyone to relax. There were never any instances where I felt like the ship was overly busy, in fact, many of the public spaces felt extra spacious with ample seating, such as the Ocean View Cafe, which is the buffet. With tall floored ceiling windows and an open floor plan, the typically crowded buffet on a cruise ship was a little bit more bearable on Celebrity Ascent. On the other hand, Norwegian Viva's design had a few more flaws. With so much outdoor space allocated for guests, the indoor spaces did feel a little more cramped. The ship is truly packed with bars, lounges, restaurants, and lots, I mean, lots of shops. When most guests retreated indoors in the evenings or during the heat of the day, Norwegian Viva seemed very crowded in my opinion. Interestingly enough, Norwegian Viva's design felt more like an older cruise ship actually with lower ceilings and a more 
compartment style design. Many of Norwegian Viva's popular spots were crowded during peak busy times, such as the theater during production shows, the pool deck during the sea day, and the surfside cafe buffet in the mornings. Overall, I preferred Celebrity Ascent's design, including more open spaces and attention to detail. The large pool deck could easily accommodate passengers during the sea day, and none of the popular spaces felt overly cramped during my time on board. Now let's compare dining between these two new cruise ships. One of my favorite parts of cruising is enjoying all of the dining options on board, including both specialty and complimentary. Having subpar food can really dampen a cruise experience for me, and Celebrity Ascent and Norwegian Viva both offered a multitude of options for complimentary and specialty dining. Considering both ships are nearly identical in size, each have a similar assortment of restaurants, eateries, and cafes. Both Celebrity Ascent and Norwegian Viva have eight specialty dining restaurants on board, although Viva's four fee restaurants are only open for dinner. In addition, most of the specialty restaurants on board Viva are a la carte, whereas Celebrity Ascent has more fixed prices, except for Ron 5, which does have a la carte pricing. I only had the option to dine at Le Petit Chef on board Celebrity Ascent, which was an immersive dining spectacle featuring a tiny animated chef. While looking at the menus and prices for Norwegian Viva, I was surprised to see higher prices and the a la carte menu style. However, some restaurants were more expensive than others. Perhaps with more time on board or if I had booked a free Etsy package, which includes some specialty dining, I would have considered splurging on a specialty restaurant. Comparing the complimentary dining options, I was impressed with the dining experiences on both Ascent and Viva. Both have many options throughout the ship for both lunch and dinner, although each new ship has unique options that differentiate between the two. To start, Celebrity Ascent has four main dining rooms, each with its own theme decor. This beautiful new ship also has four complimentary casual dining venues, including Spa Cafe, Eating Cafe, The Ocean View Cafe, and Mast Grill. I'd argue that Celebrity Ascent has one of the best buffets at sea with a wide variety of high quality cuisine, the tall ceilings, and the trendy decor. On the other hand, Viva's Buffet, the Surfside Cafe, feels like an afterthought from the cruise line. The buffet was far too small for all of the guests on board to use, and it created an overly busy, cramped, and loud environment. We avoided Surfside Cafe for most of the cruise, although we did have breakfast here a few of the mornings. In addition to Surfside Cafe, Viva featured two main dining rooms and three complimentary casual dining venues. These include the local bar and grill, Indulge Food Hall, and the Observation Lounge. In my opinion, the Indulge Food Hall on Norwegian Viva is one of the most innovative and efficient dining options that I've experienced on any cruise ship. At each table, you'll find an iPad for guests to order entrees from a long list of internationally inspired food stalls, including Indian, barbecue, Asian, and more. The entire area is designed to be food hall with a food truck feel, and within minutes, the entrees were served to our table. Honestly, I was shocked that this was a complimentary eatery, and I would consider this restaurant a grand slam for Norwegian Cruise Line. It had quick service and excellent food. We ate here multiple times for lunch, dinner, and breakfast, and I thoroughly enjoyed everything in the Indulge Food Hall. I was also impressed with the main dining rooms on Norwegian Viva, which included Hudson's in the Commodore Club. While the latter is a smaller space, Hudson's dining room provided nearly panoramic views from the ship's aft with very upscale decor. We had excellent service and delicious food. Now let's compare the staterooms between these two cruise ships. Norwegian Viva and Celebrity Ascent have a huge array of staterooms available for guests to book, from cushy suites to affordable inside staterooms. To be frank, comparing my personal experiences will be very difficult since I had a more luxurious experience on Celebrity Ascent in a suite compared to a frugal inside cabin on Norwegian Viva. During my cruise on Ascent, I was assigned an Aqua Sky Suite for our two-night media sailing. This was my first suite experience on a premium cruise line, and I was really blown away by the top-tier suite. Moving towards the other end of the spectrum, though, on Viva, we booked an affordable inside cabin for three guests. Our cabin was considered an inside family stateroom with bunk beds. While it feels like comparing apples to oranges, I did have positive stateroom experiences on both of these new cruise ships. However, each stateroom had its own pros and cons. It was evident that both cruise lines have focused on designing staterooms that are equally functional as they are aesthetically pleasing on board their newest ships. Celebrity Ascent features fully sized king beds in nearly every stateroom category, and that's a distinct feature of the premium cruise line. 
Because of this, I slept incredibly well both nights in our Aqua Sky Suite on Celebrity Ascent. Similarly, I enjoyed my experience on Norwegian Viva when sailing in an inside stateroom. I typically sail in an inside stateroom, so this is more of a typical cruise experience for me versus my suite experience on Ascent. Since I was cruising with two other people, we had to utilize the Pullman beds for sleeping. Despite that, we had plenty of space during our four-night cruise with enough drawers, shelving, and closet space. The bathroom was particularly well-designed with a very spacious shower, which is a big improvement from older cruise ships that have the tiny capsule showers in their bathrooms. Both cabins were beautifully designed with light woodwork, ensuring that the staterooms did not feel dark or cramped. I also noticed how each stateroom had more outlets for charging devices than any other ship that I've sailed on. This was especially appreciated on Norwegian Viva because there were three of us traveling together with lots of devices that needed charging. Notably, both of these new cruise ships have upscale and exclusive areas for sweet guests, including Norwegian's Haven and the Retreat on Celebrity Ascent. Think of a cruise ship having its own private resort with especially attentive service, spacious suites, and premium amenities. Both of these suite areas also feature a private restaurant, a bar, a lounge, and a sun deck for guests to utilize during their sailing. One distinct difference though between Viva and Ascent is the number of solo cabins. Norwegian Cruise Line is known for its solo cabin experience, providing guests with access to a solo lounge and even organized activities to connect with other solo guests. On Norwegian Viva, you can find 73 solo cabins available to book. On the other hand, Ascent only has 16 single occupancy cabins on board. So at the end of the day, Norwegian Viva is the best choice for solo travelers with a specifically curated experience. Next, I'm gonna compare the entertainment between the two ships. Sailing on a brand new cruise ship means that you will get to experience some of the best production shows from the cruise line. From full-length Broadway musicals to immersive theatrical performances, there should be no shortage of awe-inspiring entertainment on a new cruise ship. During my cruises on Viva and Ascent, I was able to see the newest entertainment options from each cruise line, and I was not left disappointed. Both Norwegian Cruise Line and Celebrity Cruises are known for their exciting entertainment options, so I was eager to compare the two experiences on board. While cruising on Ascent, we only had two evenings to cram in as much entertainment as possible. The stage on Celebrity Ascent, though, along with all Edge-class ships, is especially innovative. The protruding stage allows for an immersive entertainment experience between the performers and the audience members, and I just love the entertainment space on Celebrity Ascent. I think it's so innovative, it's really revolutionary, and it really creates this fully immersive experience. Three new shows debuted on Celebrity Ascent and I was able to attend two of them. These were called Awaken and Bridges. Both of these shows were original production shows from the cruise line and featured singing, dancing, acrobatics, and technological elements. We also peeked into another show in Eden, which was a bit more intimate, interactive, and a little risque. I'd love more time on board though to see all of the headliner shows on Celebrity Ascent. However, if you're looking for a big name entertainment and Broadway musicals, then Viva is the place to be. The brand new cruise ship from Norwegian Cruise Line is the first to feature Beetlejuice the musical at sea. While I had heard of Beetlejuice, I had never seen the movie or the musical before. This was a 90 minute production show and it was incredible on Norwegian Viva. It was complete with an impressive set and Broadway style performers. However, Norwegian Viva seemed to be very limited in other entertainment offerings. Two evenings actually did not even really have a main headliner production and one of the nights was a game show. So that was a little bit disappointing in my opinion. One of the biggest disappointments as well on Viva was the size of the theater. While the space can transform into a nightclub in the evening, seating in the theater is very limited. Even after arriving 30 minutes before showtime, we had trouble finding seats for the three of us to sit together. It was a competitive environment to say the least, and seat saving was strictly prohibited and enforced. It created a little bit of a tense environment before the show began. All right, next we're gonna compare the lounges and bars on board. No cruising experience is complete without a drink in hand while watching the sunset. Both of these brand new ships have more bars and lounges than I can count. There always seemed to be another fun option to grab a drink on both of these ships, most with distinct menus and unique designs. It's tough to declare one cruise ship better than the other as Celebrity Ascent has 14 different cafes, bars, and lounges, while Norwegian Viva has 18 different bars and lounges on board. I particularly enjoyed the bar experience on Celebrity Ascent though. To start, the European Design Sunset Bar is the perfect place to grab a cocktail and take in the sweeping views of the ocean passing by. This is probably one of my favorite bars on any cruise ship actually. The Grand Atrium on Ascent is also home to the huge martini bar with 20 something different martinis on the menu and they're served up with lots of of tricks and shows by the bartenders. Finally, the Magic Carpet is one of the most distinct bars on board as you can enjoy unparalleled views off the side of the ship. 
Viva has a few more bars and lounges on board compared to Celebrity Ascent. I was surprised by how many bars and lounges were packed on board Norwegian Viva and they each had their own unique ambiance. In particular, Norwegian Viva had many outdoor bars and lounges for guests to enjoy. So if you were on a scenic cruise, there would be plenty of spaces to have a drink outside. When it comes to drinking on Norwegian Cruise Line, you will find that many guests end up paying for the free at sea open bar add-on. Because of this, you will not find any shortage of bars on board to grab a cocktail and most of the time they are quite busy. In fact, I asked a bartender on my recent Norwegian cruise and he said that typically 70 to 80% of guests have a drink package on board. So that could explain why Norwegian Viva has more bars than Celebrity Ascent, even though the ships are the same size. All right, next we're gonna compare innovation, technology, and thrills between these two ships. Cruise lines are always looking for ways to bring bold technology, innovation, and onboard thrills to their newest cruise ships. Comparing Celebrity Ascent and Norwegian Viva is a little difficult as Norwegian's newest cruise ship caters to a wider demographic. On the other hand, Celebrity Ascent was designed with adults in mind. Regardless, both of these new cruise ships had impressive technology and innovation on board. Norwegian Viva has a lot to offer for guests and looks to offer a little bit of something for everybody. When looking at the top deck of Norwegian Viva, you can't miss the Viva Speedway. This is the largest racetrack from Norwegian Cruise Line and it takes up a lot of space on the ship's top deck. In fact, I would argue that it probably takes up too much space and it leaves very little room for the only main pool on board. In addition, Norwegian Viva has two dry slides called the Rush and the Drop. Although these are dubbed the fastest slides at sea by the cruise line, my experiences would disagree as the slides were quite slow. One of the slides, many people tended to get stuck and had to weasel their way down, so that doesn't necessarily seem like a very thrilling experience. There's also one water slide on board called the Wave, which is the cruise line's first wave water slide, and this experience was a lot more thrilling. Compared to Celebrity Ascent, Norwegian Viva is a better fit for families or thrill seekers. However, Celebrity Ascent has its own technological advancements and innovations on board. First, the magic carpet is an engineering marvel. The cantilevered platform can serve as a bar in the evenings on the top deck, or it can be lowered to serve as a tender launch. Because Celebrity Ascent is designed to be a premium adult experience, you won't find any onboard thrills. So there's no water slides, zip lines, bungee jumping, or anything of the like. Instead, you'll find innovative spaces like the rooftop garden with real greenery and the transformative Eden space, which is a restaurant, bar, a lounge, and also has entertainment in the evening. Additionally, Celebrity Ascent was designed to have the first flex fuel engine, which allows the ship to run off three different types of fuel. So in conclusion, Norwegian Viva and Celebrity Ascent are both modern, innovative cruise ships with so much to offer. It's important to remember that Celebrity Cruises is a premium cruise line when we're comparing the two, meaning that the onboard experience for Celebrity is catered more towards adults. On the other hand, Norwegian Cruise Line is more family friendly and aims to have something for everybody on board. At the end of the day though, I have a hard time overlooking Norwegian Viva's obvious design flaws. The ship felt more crowded and cramped during our cruise. This was true even while we were docked in port and opted to stay on board. Norwegian Viva's pool deck also is far too small in my opinion with too much space allocated for the Viva Speedway. However, Norwegian Viva has tons of outdoor space for guests to enjoy during their cruise. So with the right climate and itinerary, utilizing the outdoor space could alleviate some of the crowdedness inside. Additionally, guests traveling with children will want to consider the attractions offered by Norwegian Viva that you won't find on the top deck of Celebrity Ascent. On the other hand, Celebrity Ascent is part of the award-winning Edge class series from Celebrity Cruises. The ship's design feels really flawless with so much attention to detail around every corner. There seems to be the perfect ratio of indoor to outdoor space with enough room for everybody on board to relax. Additionally, Celebrity Ascent appears to have more entertainment options compared to Norwegian Viva, at least in my experience on these two cruises. However, you won't find any of the big name Broadway shows on Ascent like you can find on Viva. Depending on your itinerary, you might be looking for more entertainment options than you will find on Norwegian Viva. Regardless, both of these new cruise ships are sure to offer incredible vacation experiences. There's nothing quite like sailing on a new cruise ship and experiencing the best of the best from a cruise line. All right, everybody, that's all I have for today, comparing these two brand new cruise ships. Comment below if you have sailed on either of these ships and what your thoughts are in comparison. Be sure to like and subscribe to Cruise Blog so you can be notified every time we have a new video. Until next time, everybody, happy cruising.